Hello and welcome to Learning Git. In our last section, we saw some useful teamwork features, like branching and forking and issuing pull requests. Today we begin our fourth and final section of the course where we'll learn a few advanced Git features. In this section, we'll first have a look at interactive rebasing, followed by a video on tagging releases. The last advanced feature we'll discuss will be tracing code, and then we'll wrap it up with some ideas on what to do next with the things we've learned. For our first video, we'll be learning about the interactive rebasing feature. We'll discuss what interactive rebasing is with a focus on squashing commits. We'll review some of the benefits of rebasing, and we'll also walk through a real-world example showing just how much trouble it can save. So what does interactive rebasing mean? Essentially, it's a feature that allows us to rewrite the commit history. If we want our changes to be modified or repackaged in some way, this feature allows us to make additional changes to previous commits without having to make a new one. There are a number of operations that can be performed on any commit in an interactive rebase. We can change the commit message. We can tell git to stop at that commit so we can edit some files. Most commonly, though, we will use the squash operation to condense multiple commits into a single commit. This is the operation we'll focus on for today's video. Using the squash operation gives us the ability to combine a range of commits into one with a message that summarizes the entirety of the changes. Another important benefit we get from interactive rebasing is easier synchronization. To demonstrate this, let's visit our friend Sarah, whom we've been following throughout this course. First, let's view Sarah's unpushed commits. We can do this with the git log command if we supply a range of commits as the argument. The range will start at the tip of upstream my awesome feature, and will end at the tip of our current branch, which is known as head. Here we see four commits, and if we looked even closer, we'd see that she modified the same line of code in every commit. The commit messages explain why. With each commit, she was adding an additional argument to a method. She's ready to push it, but she needs to rebase first to make sure her code is synchronized with the upstream. She'll use git pull with the rebase option, and right away we'll see that we have a merge conflict. As we did previously, let's edit the problem file and see what the issue is. Here you can see that Zach has actually modified the exact same line of code. In fact, in our contrived example, he seems to be doing the exact same thing as Sarah, which is adding arguments to a method. Sarah needs to keep all of his changes as the rebase continues because she needs to make sure that what she ends up modifying is the most current version of the code. So she's going to keep his changes for now, save, and quit. As usual, we add in the file and continue our rebase. Now that we've fixed the conflict and added it back in, it's telling us that there's nothing to do and suggests that we can skip over this step that's a little bit confusing, but Sarah's going to do as it suggests and see what happens. We use git rebase with the skip option. This tells us to just apply the next commit in the queue. Again, we have a conflict in the same file, so let's open it up and see what's going on. Here we have to fix the exact same conflict, except now we have the second argument that Sarah's added. This rebasing is really starting to get frustrating for Sarah. How many times will she have to tell Git to keep her changes? Interactive rebasing comes to the rescue here. First, Sarah will abort this rebase with git rebase using the abort option. This undid everything, so we're back to where we started. This time, Sarah is going to squash all her commits into one. She's made four of them as we saw previously. She'll have to tell Git to interactively rebase that many commits. So we use git rebase with the dash i option for interactive, and then head tilde 4 indicates that we're doing the last four commits. Now we see the last four commits that she made, and a list of possible options. In order to squash these commits, she will keep the first one exactly how it is, but for those that remain, she'll replace the word pick with the word squash. This tells git to merge everything together into a single commit. After saving her changes, the text editor comes back again, giving her the opportunity to choose what the commit message should look like. Since the smaller commits had messages like added argument 1 and added argument 2, she chooses a summarizing message, added arguments. 
Now she'll save and exit the text editor. Now that we have a single commit instead of four, let's try rebasing one more time. As we expected, Sarah has the same conflict, but this time it only needs to be resolved once. Now she's going to keep her version of the code, because we're finished rebasing, save and quit. We're going to add in the file, and continue our rebase, and everything's been applied cleanly. All that's left to do is push and do a pull request. By squashing those commits together, Sarah was able to make conflict resolution significantly easier, and she's also making the Git history a lot less noisy. Join us for our next video where we'll demonstrate how to tag deployments, release candidates, and major production releases of Zach and Sarah's problem solver.